everybody. Uh, we're going to try something new uh, on Pardo's turn, and that's in part to the generosity of my guest for this week, Jen Gambatis. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, if you have tuned in before, you know that I usually talk for about five minutes about the song, and then I bring in my guest, and we talk about it, and we sing. Uh, but Jen is such a scholar and enthusiastic about the process that we thought we'd kind of go through the song together, and we'll see if this format works for the future. So. Um, First of all, in terms of the song selection, your career is so varied. You got into Broadway through Footloose, and then have had, you know, All Shook Up, and you know some other kind of more pop-oriented uh, scores, and then, you know, you've also done the classics in a lot of these prominent regional uh, productions. So, um, but when I floated Annie Get Your Gun, that seemed to perk up some lights. What what was it about this role in this show that was special for you? Production well, is beautiful. Hero, like he he yeah. does such an amazing job, sort of. Re not well. Some in some ways reimagining these mm -hmm. classic shows, and especially on the postage stamp size stage at yeah. Good Speed. But yeah, Annie Get Your Gun at Good Speed mm -hmm. was just it was just a dream. You right. know, I I had seen the show back when Bernadette had done mm -hmm. it. Um, did I see Reba as well? I don't remember. But it's I mean you forget like how many great tunes are in this show. It's, it's just like um, hit what, after hit. You, know, you you would think it was like. A jukebox musical of his greatest hits. And almost everyone are sung by Miss Annie Oakley. Mm -hmm. So for and it's written in that great classical way where it's just in the meat of a right. woman's voice. Mm -hmm. You know, this was pre-amplification. Um, this was Ethel originally. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to you about that because usually, you know, when I speak with actors who are playing roles that may have been outside their wheelhouse from what they originally thought. It, it's usually constrained by, you know, some kind of uh, age or ethnicity or, or some other kind of bend. And I think of Ethel as a certain type of broad, and I think of you as a, as a very different type of actress. So, and then I think when Bernadette uh, landed the revival in the late 90s, it kind of changed the role for a lot of performers. You know, it's so funny because I, I love the canon, mm -hmm. right? But I'm not necessarily a steep, like I think I know all the shows, but I, I'm not one of those actors who have like a huge bucket list. Right. Like I, but if the audition comes up, I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that would be cool. We weren't ever trying to like recreate, you know, Ethel's stamp on it. Right. Um, so I never felt constrained with it. I felt like, and I, a great joy for me with this show was the historical true parts, <laughs> historically right. true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, here she was, a real person, Miss Annie Oakley, you yeah. know, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, like there's so much that I could research and, and tap into, all of which is before you get in the rehearsal room and mm -hmm. then you're kind of finding out what's so in the moment. But um, I don't know, I'm just such a nerd, which is why I wanted to do this part with you. So to me, the thing that makes this song interesting is in many ways, it's the transformative song for Annie, you know, and for a lot of shows, you know, there's the song that represents where a character starts and then the, where, where he or she yeah. finishes. And usually, you know, people start out and they're meek and, you know, they make this discovery and they break open. And in so many ways, uh, what makes Annie Get Your Gun interesting is that she you know, bursts out of the cannon, you know, or a gun, literally, and then, you know, she kind of becomes more vulnerable. vulnerable and you know it reels her in with this repeated yeah. note on the tonic it's like for once in her life she's actually paralyzed and you know she she can't move she can't think and then you know, the the figure repeats but it's even in a more kind of grounded. dark and grounded mm -hmm. place in your voice with these chords I love that chord. So you have, I don't know what the technical term for this chord is. I had a theory comp professor in college who called it the super sus. It's like the four over the five. And it just has this, uh, you can luxuriate it in it, but it also you know, needs to be resolved. Yeah, you need to find it. Exactly. The Since Irving Berlin does his own music and lyrics together, they always you know, work in tandem so well. And I, I think this is another sterling example. You know, it starts right out uh, with the song proper, I got lost in his arms. So he sets up an expectation for a search, to, to find something. And at the end, the, you know, the final lyric is so satisfying in that way. But even just in the journey to get there, 
he has this slow creep. It's you know, <laughs> it's not a, it's barely stepwise. He's having all these repeated notes. I got lost in his arms. And then you know these t chords underneath it get more and more tense uh, as it's going on the yeah. search. It's it you know all it's like you're blowing up a balloon and all of a sudden you let all the air out yeah. or you're searching through a desk drawer to find something oh no it's not in this one and you push it and start your search <laughs> over you know and then you very literally you, you start it all again yeah. and I love uh, how the melody you know we'll call that this the song proper it then yeah. has the the, uh, the interlude which I think is really important for the character and then it has this triumphant modulation you know up a half step into the key of A which is kind of bright and for the strings has all the open strings to make it all lush and romantic mm. but in terms of just the strict kind of 32 bar cut it starts on that A flat flat don't ask me how just how it happened and then it ends up but look what I found mm -hmm. you're on the same note mm -hmm. it's a full as, circle full circle it's <laughs> you know he's telling us even not explicitly but you know just implicitly that what we were looking for was there all the time yeah. and I think that's ah, ruby slippers yeah. so I want to talk to you about a couple of the things yeah. um, First of all, you have this organization that you're launching, which I think is so exciting, oh, uh, and I you. want all my viewers to uh, to hear about it. Okay, yeah. Well, I was telling Dan, I'm in the process of creating a service organization called Broadway Heals, mm -hmm. and it is connecting the Broadway community to children's hospitals and nursing homes in a way that makes it super easy for folks to volunteer pockets of their time to bring song and spoken word. I don't want to leave mm -hmm. out our non-singing friends. Uh, but bring those things to people's bedsides. Um, it's really in process, you know, each institution has their own requirements for mm -hmm. how people volunteer, especially children's hospitals, you yes. know. Um, but we have a, a soft launch happening October 15th at the Children's Hospital of New York. Um, so far, Sierra Bogus is on board with me, and Elton Fitzgerald White, Carol Lindsay, you might be noticing a theme here. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little Disney sort of compilation for the kids. Um, but again, this is just to sort of launch things off, and then my big dream is to have this be at the bedsides where, you know, I was telling you, there'll be mm -hmm. like an app. You know, you could be like, okay, oh, I have that audition on Thursday, and I'm going to look real nice. Mm -hmm. I'll go spend an hour at the nursing home right. and um, just be with people. Because what's the alternative? Just like, you know, going home or spending yeah. money at a coffee shop? Exactly. You, know, you might as well do something productive well. and... and uh, you know, generous Contributing, exactly. yeah, and and I think one of the reasons I chose um, the the moniker Broadway Heals is, I think it's going to be really healing not only for the patients and residents but for the artist as well. Absolutely. Because you know a lot of us go through this business being like, Ugh, I just want to share my gifts and I'm not getting hired or I'm right. not getting auditions and it's like you know, you can share your gifts in other ways that mm -hmm. are independent of you know, book in the gig. Right. So. so you're doing this Disney theme, and if you don't know, uh, Jen was the original Jane on Tarzan <laughs> on Broadway, so I have a very important question. Okay. Is Jane a Disney princess? No. Yeah. And there you have it. And there you I, have it in the horse's yeah. mouth, mouth, but I, as I say in my mm -hmm. cabaret, you know, there are a lot of Disney princesses, mm -hmm. but there's only one Disney botanist. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> and that was me on mm -hmm. the Broadway. Um, but yeah, it's um, she's, there's no no royal blood or mm -hmm. marrying into royal blood, and it's, that's what's kind of cool about her. The other thing I wanted to um, to talk to you about, and this is your organization is so uh, representative of of this. You're just so lovely and talented on stage, and then you're also one of the most kind and generous and gracious performers I've had to work with, you know, you know, in life. I'm gonna come do another episode um, if this is what this is like. No, and <laughs> this this business uh, for so many people is so draining and so cutthroat. You know, how do you keep your positive energy and you know, it's because it's so refreshing to see. Gosh, that's a really good question. I mean, I think for me, it's been a lot about 
you know, I love what I do, and mm -hmm. it's a huge part of who I am, but it's only part of who I am. So I think sometimes in this business, people can get so preoccupied with like getting ahead in it mm -hmm. and succeeding that you forget that like at the end of it all, when we're the ones in the nursing mm -hmm. homes, you're, we're not going to be thinking about like, oh, if I had only booked that, or if it's it's just really about being present with people mm -hmm. and building our lives as a whole, which for me includes my family yeah. and um, Jojo and Charlie, Jojo and, Charlie Jane. Jane. And, and so it's really funny during Annie Get Your Gun at Good Speed, Jojo was turning one year old. Mm -hmm. So this was my first gig back after becoming a mother, mm -hmm. which was a tall order because I think Annie sings like 21 songs, you know? Gosh. And I'm up there, um, I, you know, I had during rehearsals, I had my mother-in-law and my sister for part of it, and then I just had a babysitter who would come like right before showtime. Mm -hmm. But when they're one years old, I mean, JoJo was getting up at six in the morning, yeah. which means I was getting up at six in the morning, and it was hard, it was really hard. Um, thankfully, as I was talking about earlier, like Irving Berlin, Rogers and Hammerstein, they, they write thing. They wrote things pre-amplification, mm -hmm. so you're not living here. Yeah. You know the money notes are here, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a big occasionally here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've, I've enjoyed you know just crossing into legit territory, mm -hmm. um, and that even and that even was um, you know that's interesting when I did Wicked mm -hmm. on tour. Because Glinda is written, so Elfie's written more, right. you know, modern day. It's it's mm -hmm. it's sitting there. It's it's sitting there on those poor girls. But Glinda is a little bit more old school, mm -hmm. right? She's, and even the role that you did in School of Rock, you know, she's singing yes. all that high soprano, uh, you know, love yes, stuff, so. yeah, and that was really helpful. I felt like I was in the best singing shape of mm -hmm. my life in School of Rock because I was stretching those muscles with the Mozart, mm -hmm. um, so that then when I got to the kind of like Stevie Nicks land, right. Um, you know, I was like good and supple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's such a journey to do this. Um, you know, eight shows a week is no joke. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, raising two daughters is no joke. <laughs> um, but when you love what you do, it's just, I don't know, you gotta do it.
for doing that. Oh, that was so pleasure. beautiful. It was so great to. That was the first time I ever saw you on stage. So yeah. Um, Long thank time you ago. all for tuning in uh, with me and Jen Gambatiste on Pardo's turn. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And check out Jen's new organization, uh, Broadway Heels. It's really important work that she's uh, venturing out on. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.